Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, the Linux Lite 4.4 release candidate is out, so we are going to have a look at this guy inside of a virtual machine, and uh, if this is your first introduction to Linux Lite, it will probably not disappoint. Uh, it is one of those ones that is really well suited for low-end um, hardware, maybe it's something a little bit older. And uh, we'll kind of walk into what it is and uh, what cases you might use it for. So their main website over here is at linuxliteos.com. You can grab any information here. So uh, come on down. There's the features. It'll tell you about all the different tools and abilities. There's some download links. What are your basic system requirements? Uh, and uh, whatnot. So here we have minimum requirements, 768 megabytes of RAM, 8 gigs of storage, 1024 by 768 screen resolution, um, one gig processor is kind of your minimum, and then there's uh, some preferred as well. Uh, there is uh, Linux Lite 4.2, 64-bit over there, and uh, I'm not, you know, I've did not get a chance to see, let's see, 64. So back into, if you want to get like a 32-bit, you'll have to go back into the 3.8 branch. Um, so this is based on Ubuntu, and uh, like Ubuntu, they have dropped the 32-bit support going forward after version 4. Uh, so if you do need a 32, they should still have a few years left on the LTS. They are uh, based on the Ubuntu LTS, which has uh, at least five years of support as it is. And so you can go ahead and grab the information there. As far as, um, I don't remember exactly where I grabbed the uh, the beta S ISO here, or the release candidate ISO, other than you can grab it on distro watch. So you can go ahead and look over there. So this is, uh, as I said, this is based on Ubuntu, and being based on Ubuntu, it is... Uh, going to have a lot of the different perks that that's going to give you. It has the XFCE desktop environment with uh, several customized tools to make the basic computer administration very easy, kind of like MX Linux. Now, MX Linux and uh, Linux Lite are very closely related. A couple of your major differences, MX Linux is, um, although having a slightly different UI, MX Linux will also have, um, it's based on Debian versus Linux Lite is based on Ubuntu. They both run XFCE. They both have tools to do a lot of the similar things. And I think some of those tools kind of, uh, kind of behave about the same way. And so uh, what we're going to do here is jump on over into the virtual machine. I've already installed this into the virtual machine so that we can see what it looks like as we as we get everything running. And I accidentally pushed a wrong button, so give me just one second. All right, so here we are on the desktop. So when you first boot this guy up, you are going to get this nice welcome screen unless you disable it with the checkbox over here. And uh, you can get this guy back in the from the menu if you come over here and uh, you are looking for this welcome screen again and you're not enabling it to start up, you can just find light welcome in the menu by searching for it. So like I said, the basic layout is going to be very similar to uh, any other basic Windows type system. So it's going to be a, a Windows um, replacement. We have our, our clock. We have a few different desktop switchers over there, some quick launch type bars. Our menu, this is one of the menus that you can very easily set the custom size of the menu depending on what you want. Uh, so you have that option there as well. We also have the ability to search. We have settings. Lock the screen, switch the user, log out, which is the shutdown features, log out, shut down. We have the favorites menu, which is uh, the default uh, first place to go. And then you can go over and grab the variety of different softwares here. All right, so on your welcome screen when you first log in. Oh, another thing to note is um, one of the compelling reasons you might consider Linux Lite over Peppermint is it actually has all of the desktop icons by default already working, which is something that Linux, uh, excuse me, uh, Peppermint does not have. Now I run Peppermint still on my lower spec machine and I absolutely love it. I mostly went with it because I really love the theming and Peppermint and I can restore the desktop icons. If you don't know how to get in, you don't want to figure out how to use the deconf editor and put your uh, desktop icons. And what I mean by that, it's not that Peppermint can't work off the desktop. It's that your recycling bin, your user folders, uh, these different tools 
they don't have an easy way to put them on the desktop in Peppermint, uh, whereas they do here in Linux Lite. So that's one of your one of your reasons. As far as similarities, um, th there's a few other odds and ends differences. Of course, Peppermint handles your ICE applications by default for web-based applications. Linux Lite does not. Uh, so those are some of the things to think about. So once you get this started, there's this blue column here to the left. You can install updates, which I did not yet do, and I'm not going to because, uh, well, it is a release candidate that was just released, I think, today, yesterday or today, I think today. And so we're not going to run those right now. But you want to come in here and install the updates. Installing the drivers. Um, come on down here and install the drivers. Now, one of the factors is that uh, as you click in on that screen, it doesn't always align you where it should. This is the driver utility that is going to be inside of, uh, inside of most Ubuntu-based distros unless it has been intentionally removed. And so what you have over here is you have the ability to scan your computer for different drivers. So any Ubuntu-based system, my cat is going crazy. Um, any Ubuntu-based distros here, um, you can boot up this driver menu and so look for any drivers, whether you have maybe some proprietary drivers for a video card or the biggest complaint in Linux is uh, your wireless card may not be working. Find a way to get your system on the internet, which could very well be a USB a wireless adapter or a USB to Ethernet adapter or bridge the internet with your phone through a cable, any other way to get it on the internet, run this driver utility, and then you'll be able to install proprietary drivers for your hardware. The next step is setting a restore point. This is very much like the Windows restore point. I believe this is using time shift. And it's going to basically, it doesn't back up the files, it backs up the operating system. So there are also ways to make backup of your files, but the restore point is kind of like the way Windows does it. It does an entire restore of the system without the file. So you change a bunch of things and then the system goes bad. You can use time shift. You can restore the system back to a previous configuration, but it will not alter your files. So those are, are excellent things. And of course, there's language support there as well. And of course, we've uh, killed our welcome screen, but I think that was probably all we needed to walk through because everything else is going to be the same. You can get the support with the online support, help manual, forums, hardware database, and then there's some extra things here. Uh, go ahead and contribute to these guys if you have the capability. Follow them on their social medias, look at their shop, or donate to them. Uh, they do do a really good job for this distro. And it is uh, out of, uh, I believe it's out of New Zealand. Am I correct about that? I think it's out of New Zealand. All right, so uh, the next thing about this one is we have a lot of tools that are specific to Linux Lite. So this is our basic control panel for XFCE, which if you're used to this desktop, then you'll be used to it. But you'll notice down here under system, we have a lot of these light applications down here. These will enable you to do a lot of neat things. Here's your welcome screen. Uh, light info shares your hardware info with the community if you want to do that. Um, there's the auto login settings, so you can enable or disable the auto login very easily. Uh, the desktop, this is where you do things. Now, this, this is not the most user-friendly platform, but hey, at least they have it. So you see that the first half of the list is all enable, the second half of the list is all dis disable, and it's the same thing. So if you want to remove the recycling bin, come down to recycling bin, disable, and OK, and you'll notice that our recycling bin has now vanished. Of course, I like recycling bins, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I don't really want the control panel. What? I'm going to enable that. I'm going to disable the control panel. I don't really need that on my system. And I found on Linux, I don't specifically need this PC in there anyway. As long as I have user files, I'm okay with that. So there we are. Now we have a recycling bin. We have our user files. We have our network. This is just, I can toss that if I want to, I hope. No, can I toss it? Can I kill you, please? Maybe I can't delete you? I don't know. Yes, delete the help manual. All right. I like a clean desktop. I like to work off my desktop, but I do like it clean because it's like I like an organized desktop. All right. 
So light info, light network shares, this will help you configure your network share settings. So in my case where I have, um, I actually have some network shares that I can use uh, to share the different files between the different computers on my network. So that's easy. This is their custom software system. Um, and of course, if I tried to type a password while I was talking and I got all messed up. So here it's asking us, do we want to update the software sources? I'm going to go ahead and do that. I changed the repository um, since the last time I did this. I installed one piece of software uh, just to test how the functionality is working. Uh, so here we can, uh, it's going to pull us up. Do we want to install software or remove software? We'll hit install. Now, the good thing about this for a new user is that it is doesn't overwhelm you with everything. The bad news is it really limits what you actually have available to you. So this list here is pretty much the most popular things there are. There's Wine, we have TeamViewer, we have Skype, uh, we have OBS, uh, Clementine, I'm guessing that's Clementine, yep, Clementine, Dropbox, FileZilla, just some basic common items here, but they don't overwhelm you with everything. This is again just to make make it very easy to administer. Of course, if you want to remove software, you can do this. Now, the only software package I installed was Spotify, so you see that it's asking us, do we want to install that guy um, or uninstall that guy? I'm not going to. Um, the other option that you have, though, is we do have, if you are more of a more seasoned Linux guy, we have Synaptic Package Manager on here as well. So you have whichever option that you happen to want. You got your Synaptic, you got your, um, your easy one for your new users as well. Light sounds, you can enable system sounds, enable login sounds, and um, enable logout sounds. You can disable all the sounds, and then you can launch your volume control, which you could also get to down at the bottom as well. All right. Light sources, this is your repositories. So if you are new to Linux, repositories is where you get your software packages from. The default is this one here, I believe. I should have mine set to using one of the United States ones. Um, it's already the default. So it didn't show me that. It still looks like this one is there, but um, for whatever reason, it, it yelled at me when I tried to change it again. We do have some basic tweaks you can do. So if you need to fix the boot up, um, it restores the, the boot flash screen, uh, clearing memory. Uh, this guy here will allow you to set your default web browser. There are a lot of different things in here. So these are all things, I really like these tools because it gives newer users kind of a way to do some things that uh, you may not think of. So, you know, even simple things like number lock. So they really did think of a lot of cool things, which is what makes Linux Lite a really good attractive option. Definitely has more uh, more options and configurations than uh, Peppermint does, about the same as MX Linux. So if it were, you know, somebody were to say which one to use, I would say check out MX, check out Linux Lite, check out Peppermint, and also don't forget Linux Mint XFCE, which might be a little heavier than these other ones, but my personal, I use Peppermint. Uh, I love the configurations and settings in there. This does have more settings and a little bit easier to configure some systems, uh, some system settings. Here's our notifications. Um, Okay, so you can set up some notification options and things. Um, and these are for your system updates. So notifications from from the if there's any any updates or upgrades. Here's the upgrade, user manager, and of course our welcome screen. So that kind of walks you through this. Now, of course, uh, other things in XFCE. Um, I have more more comprehensive videos on some of these, but you know, this is where your panel is. So you can kind of determine you know, the size of your panel right here, if you like it really small, if you like it really large, or just kind of down the middle, a uh, number of rows on your panel, so you can have multiple different rows on your panel. And then the length, you can put your panel out at a certain width or not. So you have the capabilities of doing that. You also can do it 
uh, do a vertical panel or a desk bar panel, which is the default for MX Linux, if you are familiar with that. And then under our appearances, we can uh, enable some transparency in this, and we can enable some transparency just for if we're on the panel or off the panel or not. Okay, so if I do something like this, you can only see the panel if it's there. It's always there, but you can only see it if you're on it. So there's a lot of neat things that you can do within the uh, settings uh, of, the, of the platform. All right, so here's the items that's on the on the panel as well. You can add extra panels if you want panels on the top and panels on the bottom. It is possible. Just hit the plus up here. You can add another panel. So I actually have on my on my uh, what's called my backup computer, which runs Linux Mint Mate. Um, my backup computer is basically an encrypted personal backup of all my personal files. So all my taxes, bank records, all that kind of stuff that's super important is on an encrypted drive and I actually keep, uh, I actually have two panels on that. I have my bottom panel for my basic usuals and I have my top panel for extra applications and things like that. So you can do a lot of those, uh, a lot of those types of things as well. We're not going to walk through the rest of the settings in here because uh, I've already done that a lot of other places. Here is another fun request I had when somebody was talking uh, about one of the videos I did and so I think it'd be neat to look at is how well does this guy cycle between applications? So if I go Alt-Tab, this is what the cycle through applications are gonna look like. So I can go through this, and it kind of highlights the application kind of in blue based on which one is currently selected. That's actually a kind of neat neat tool, neat functionality, but uh, thanks uh, for the whoever suggested I start looking at that a little bit uh, just to kind of see. As far as the software this is going to install, um, it does give us the option to install multimedia codecs and install updates on install, uh, which is part of the, uh, the uh, is it called Ubiquity, the uh, Ubuntu one? I don't remember. Um, but as far as that, the, we don't have a minimal option specifically, uh, but we don't have an, an overwhelming amount of things. We have just basically enough system resources, a basic text editor, capture screenshots, font viewers, file search, calculator, the backups. This backups is the ones that you use to make a backup of your actual files. And then you have your archive manager. Uh, graphics, we have GIMP, an image viewer, and the scanner. We have Firefox, uh, network connection management, um, Thunderbird mail, and there's just some support. Uh, we have a DVD burner, VLC, volume control. I installed Spotify. It does not come installed by default. This is the one application I installed just to test. And then we have LibreOffice. We don't have the full LibreOffice suite. We just have the three basic ones, your, um, your writer document, your presentations, and your spreadsheets. We have a, a, a PDF viewer. So that's what we get uh, inside of our system. We have our, um, we have our uh, install softwares, partition drivers, printer tools, time shift, which is our uh, uh, restore point software things like that. As far as the memory usage, we are using about 3% and I don't know if I can actually, you know what, let's go ahead and see if HTOP is installed. Hey, HTOP is installed. So we're running right now on four and a half megs right now. So this is an excellent lightweight, uh, lightweight distribution. Uh, runs really well. This is the uh, release candidate and it looks great. This is definitely a, a distro that uh, you might wanna run if you're looking at low, uh, low spec hardware. So let me know your thoughts of Linux Lite down below, and if you are a person that likes to test different Linux distributions, uh, go ahead and uh, download a copy, play around with it, and uh, see how it works. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.